In the dark tunnel, Vandiyadeva walked with his legs crossed and did not fall. The steps went down a short distance. Then it was balanced. Steps again. Plain again. He stretched out both hands and saw that the wall was not knocked. Therefore, the tunnel must be wide. After going a little further, the steps went up. It also seemed to bend. Dad! I don't know how far I have to walk in such a rush. Aha! What is this? The darkness is receding a little. A very, very dim light appears. How and where does this dim light come from? The moonlight coming from somewhere on the ceiling above? Or the light coming through the polynomials on the walls? A light from a lamp kept in a hidden place? No, no. What's so wonderful about it? Is this scene before our eyes a real scene? Or is it the appearance of our brains being disturbed? It is a spacious hall. A dungeon hall built out of stone. That's why the top floor is so low that it almost knocks the head off. The dim moonlight that dwells in that dungeon is not from outside, it is not coming through the roof or through the balcony. Here and there in the dungeon mobs come in hordes and in some places widespread. Cow! What kind of things are those things that throw moonlight like that? Bell crowns in one corner, crowns studded with pearls, beads and diamonds, harems on the other side, strings of pearls, what is in the garlands of Navaratna, that way? God! All those white pearls like smile buds. Thick thick pearls. There are golden coins shining in the yellow sun in that pot. Here are the gold nuggets piled up here. This seems to be the dungeon treasure of Tanjore Palace. Isn't it amazing that this dark mansion and this treasure dungeon are located next to the mansion of Thanatakari Palyavatareya? Mama! Have we arrived in this dungeon? Aren't the blessed Lakshmi and the lucky goddess together who have brought us here? What a wonderful, rare secret we have learned without any effort on our part. How to use it? Let alone using, I don't feel like leaving here. Looks like it could be spinning right here. If you stay here, you won't be hungry or thirsty. Sleep is nowhere near. Here are all the fruits of the victories achieved by the Chola warriors for a hundred years. They will say that Navanadi, that's all here. Vandiyadeva walked around the dungeon. He touched the beads lying in a corner and looked. He looked at the pearl necklaces lying on the other side. After putting them on, he went to the other side and dipped his hands in the pearls that were full of copper pot. He left his hand in another pot and sprinkled gold coins. In a corner he saw something shining brightly on the floor and went there. At first he didn't know what it was, then he bent down and stared. Alas! Lord! It's a skeleton! The skeleton of the human body that was once flesh, blood, skin, fur, nose, face, eyes and ears. Cow! This skeleton is moving. It is alive and rising. It jingles like gold coins. We see that he is getting up to tell us something. Every hair stood on end from the body of the Mighty One. He thought he was crazy. See you! The skeleton didn't wake up. A giant is running from inside it. Falling at our feet and running. Yes, now the skeleton is lying on the ground. But it is true that it tells us something. Run! Don't linger here. I was as strong a man as you. I came here and got caught. I died here. Now I'm a skeleton. Run. It warns us that. From here, we immediately escaped or survived. If not, it's a disaster, that was the fate of that man. Van Dye the Van wanted to get out of that dungeon. But there is no way out. Couldn't find the way it came. Wherever he went along the edge of the dungeon, the Goblin of Darkness was gaping. Looking down, it looked like an abyss. The stairs that came up must be somewhere. Van Dye the Van tried further to find it. He searched and searched. While wandering like that, he saw a bunch of gold coins lying on the side of the wall somewhere. It looked like a net had been woven over the boat. On closer inspection, I saw that a spider had built a web on Akavile. The spider's web sparked his thinking. 
Elders have compared Manasse, Panasse, and Panasse to a spider's web. The spider waits with its web spread. A fly flies in from somewhere and gets caught in it. Then little by little the spider pulls the fly and swallows it. So are the three kinds of desires. Man goes astray and falls into the nets of desire, then there is no turning back. On that day, we experienced the three natures of Manasse, Panasse, and Banasse. Nandini, the maiden of Pavur, sought to ensnare us in her net. She also showed the desire to reach the old monkey kingdom. Finally, here is this terrible golden goblin looking to swallow us whole. Having escaped the first two, we must escape this third danger. Why all the fuss for us? What is the kingdom for? What is wealth for? What is women's co-op for? The vast earth that has the sky as its roof is our palace. Yadamur Yavaru Kalir said ancient Tamil elders. Every town is our town. All human beings are our relatives. You have to go from town to town, to enjoy the fresh flowing rivers, the trees with new leaves, the many colored birds, the saints, the peacocks, the mountains, and the peaks of the mountains, the sky, the clouds, the sea and the ocean waves, eat where food is available for hunger, sleep where you came to sleep. Aha! Isn't this a happy life? Abandoning such easily available blissful life, why lead a life full of troubles, intrigues, desires and risks? It's enough to get out of this dungeon now somehow, then leave this dark mansion and Tanjavur fort. Then, never get caught up in such troubles. Aha! The sound of the door opening and closing. The sound of footsteps again. There seems to be no end to the wonders of tonight. There is no limit to miracles. There is no limit to horrors. This time the footsteps were heard from far away. It seemed to come from both sides. Vandiyathevan gave his ear and listened carefully. He peered into the treasure dungeon like a seer tearing through the darkness surrounding him on all sides. After a while he saw the strange sight as he had expected. The scene Vandiyathevan saw was the same as the scenes appearing on the stage for someone sitting far away from the platform. It happened at a place higher than where he was at the time, at a distance that seemed far away. A torch came from one side of the platform. On the other side came another fire removing the Paiduta. Both the torches were coming closer and closer. In the light of a torch two tall black figures were visible. In the light of another lamp and two figures were seen. Among them was a tall majestic figure, the other is a slightly shorter slender shape. Both figures were coming closer to each other. Vandiyadeva stared with wide eyes and knew somehow who those figures belonged to. The two figures from the left are Kanamaran and Kavalan, escorting Madhuran Hakativara, the figures from the right are Pariya Palyavatareya and his maiden queen Nandini Devi. What happens when these two factions meet? Will something disastrous happen? Or will they leave each other's way and go peacefully? Vandiyathevan stopped even breathing in the excitement and watched very carefully. Both factions met. As they staggered and hesitated, the thought must have filled both Sararis with astonishment and astonishment. But nothing untoward happened. Palyavetarayar looked at Kanthamaran and asked something. Kanamaran said something to that. Vandiyathevan did not understand what the question and answer were. Then, the scavenger gestured with his hand and pointed to the stairway to the tunnel. Gandamaran bowed to him humbly. He bowed and went down the stairs. Looking at the guard who came behind him with a torch in his hand, Pulvatarayar signalled something. He also bowed without saying another word, covering his mouth with one hand. Then he followed Kanthamaran down the stairs. Palyavetare and Ila Iyarani went towards the left side. All the above events like shadow and puppet show took place in a few moments. Vandiyathevan observed that all this happened near the stairway leading down to the tunnel. Aha! How good it was that we wandered into this dungeon without stopping anywhere on the way. What would be our fate if we were caught between the two factions? We somehow survived. What is the way to escape? There is no doubt that Kanamaran is going back through the tunnel where he brought Madhurand Hakativar. 
we should have taken a little detour from that path to come to this treasure dungeon. Now if you continue along the path to Kanamaran, you will find the exit anyway. Then escape by doing some trick. If necessary, you can ask Kanamaran for help. Otherwise, you can run away leaving him and the guard alone. So, we can now proceed with the conversion. At first, the torchlight seemed to be approaching the dungeon. Van the van stood holding his breath. Then the light seemed to go away. By then Van Diadeva looked around. He found out which staircase entered the dungeon. He descended through it and ascended again. Devarthi walked slowly without leaving the light, without getting too close, so as not to hear the sound of footsteps. How impossible it is for us to find our way in the dark through that winding, winding, up and down tunnel. Long life Kanamaran. What are we going to do in exchange for the help he is doing us now without knowing himself? Van Diathevan never thought that he would get an opportunity so soon. The end of the tunnel has come. A great wall was visible in front. No one can imagine that there will be a gate or a door in it. But it must be. Shouldn't there be a secret entrance to the tunnel? The guard shifts the torch from his right hand to his left hand. He is doing something by placing his hand on the wall with his right hand. He is screwing up like he is screwing up Thirukani. A crack appears as a thin line in the wall. The divide is widening. A person becomes entranced. The guard points to it with one hand. Kanamaran says something to him and puts a foot in the crack that appeared in the wall. One leg is still in the tunnel. Now his entire back area is visible. Aha! What is this? What is this guard doing? Do you pick up the sharp little curved knife that was inserted in the middle? God! Kanthamaran's back has been stabbed. Badu Badagon. A sand Allen who stabs someone in the back. Van the van came out from where he was standing aside. He jumped in a single leap. Hearing the sound, the guard turned back. The light of the lamp fell on Van Diadeva's angry face. 